I spent a lovely weekend driving around southern Japan to hunt for some retro game deals at my favorite shop, Hard Off, one of which I forgot to take a picture of. Here's what I found. First up is an AV Famicom, also known as the Top Loader in the West, and here it's retailing for about 80 bucks. This is a complete Famicom Basic set for around 40 bucks. Famicom Basic was a Japan-only set of software and a keyboard that lets you program games in Basic on your Nintendo, and you can save the game to a cassette tape, not included, of course. Coming in at 160 bucks is a PC Engine Duo, which will let you play PC Engine CD-ROM games without any need for an adapter, unless you want to play Who cards. I'd buy it if it came in the box, which you can sometimes find for about the same price. Next up, and this was a huge temptation, is the Super Graphics, a souped up PC Engine in the box. At 180 bucks, this is a lot cheaper than you'd find on eBay where it goes for 250 or more. It's incredibly rare, and I really hope it's there when I come back. Just to show you how cheap retro games can be in Japan, here's a Mario Party 2 in the box for about $3. The American version can go as high as 50 bucks loose, and then there's a box copy of Super Mario World for about 10 bucks. Do you really need to know Japanese to play either of these games? Here's a row of Super Famicoms in the box for about $30 to $35. That's incredible since a Super Nintendo in the box can go for 100 or more. Then there's Earthbound for 20 bucks in the box, Parodius, the Super Mario Collection, all topped by my favorite RPG of all time, Super Mario RPG for 15 bucks in the box. And I even found a copy of The Empire Strikes Back on Laserdisc. The next store had a bunch of Super Famicoms out of the box for 35 bucks, an N64 for 30, some box of GameCubes for around $30, and a load of Playstations and Dreamcasts. The Playstation 2 has really retained its value in Japan and usually goes for about $70 for the slim models. If the exchange rate was better, that could actually be more expensive than what you find on eBay in America. The last shop has an extremely rare Astro Boy Edition Game Boy Light. The Game Boy Light was a Japan-exclusive backlit Game Boy. I think it's been here for more than the three years I've lived in Japan, and it's still going for around $180. Behind it are a loose Game Gear for $60, a Famicom Edition Game Boy Advance SP for $70, and then a Game & Watch Ball for $25. If you ever go to a hard-off, make sure you shop around, because here's a Super Mario RPG. RPG loose for 972 yen, and then one in the box for 864 yen. And the only thing that I can see wrong with it is a retail sticker, if that's something you care about. And always check the junk section where they hide stuff that's considered too dirty or broken for rack space. You can find all kinds of cords and roughed up systems that usually work perfectly fine. They might just take a few minutes to clean up. And here's what I picked up for myself. I got Terranigma, a rare Super Famicom RPG that only came out in Japan and Europe, got it for 30 bucks, and it goes for twice that on eBay. I also got a boxed copy of Super Metroid, which goes for way more on eBay, especially if we're talking about the American version. And my personal favorite, the extremely rare N64 JustCo controller that I found in the junk section. It's not in bad shape, and could easily go for $100 or more. And I got it for less than 5 bucks. That's it for this very first episode of Hands On Hard Off. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and mahalo!